It's the studio. Home audition. Hey guys, welcome to our second week of art. You guys rocked your rabbits. I love the line work and the different backgrounds that I saw. Keep on sending them. So this week we're going to change it up. We're going to do it's still something spring and Easter, but instead of rabbits and Easter eggs, we're going to do something different. We are going to make crosses to represent all the sacrifices Jesus made for us on Easter. Sounds good? Let's get creative. Okay guys, let's talk materials. So of course we're gonna need a piece of paper. I'm using uh, just a plain copy piece of paper here. Um, if you have watercolor paper, go for it. If you don't, don't worry about it. It actually works better for what we're doing to have just this plain paper. We'll just have to be mindful of it later and I'll talk to you more about it when we get to the watercolor part. Our next spot thing is if you could get a piece of paper or any a placemat to put underneath, just so it doesn't bleed through onto your table. You're also going to need a writing utensil, which is a pencil at first, and a Sharpie would be amazing. If you're allowed to use them and if you have access to one, get one right now. If not, I'll tell you how to work around that. Also, a white crayon or a white um, oil pastel if you have it. White crayon works because we're going to make and resist, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. We also need, specifically, washable markers. Those washable markers are going to make our watercolors. So of course we need water and a paintbrush. If you don't have a paintbrush, maybe you could use a Q-tip or ask your parents if they have anything that could be used for it, like an old toothbrush. So go gather those materials and we'll be meat bite back. Okay guys, awesome job. So our first things first, we're going to draw the hills that our three crosses are going to sit on. So you can use, you're going to use pencil first, of course I'm going to use Sharpie, and anytime you see me using Sharpie, do not use a black Crayola marker, and I'll tell you why when we get it wet. If you don't have a Sharpie, do not worry about it. Just do not use the black Crayola marker, okay? Got it. So first we're going to draw our hills. We want them to be not too small but not too big where we don't have enough room for our crosses. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our paper in half, then we're going to go about half right there, and that's going to be the start of my hill. And I'm going to go one up, want the larger one to be in the middle, and then I'm going to come down and make a rolling hill right there. So I have one, two, three. Those are going to be ready now to add our crosses. So if you're using a pencil, just first start by making a straight line down. We want this to be pretty large. And then across. Then we're going to take two smaller crosses right here. Straight line down and across. Straight line down and across. Perfect. So now we need to add some more width to those. Now if you don't have a Sharpie, don't do this with your Crayola marker. Just do it later and I'll show you how to do it. And just leave them, leave your pencil marks just like this. Okay, so I'm going to come back and I'm just going to add some width. I'm going back over my lines and coloring it in. Okay, one, And I want this one maybe to be a little thicker because I want this one to be emphasized because this is Jesus' cross. And he's awesome, so we want to make sure he has the best cross, right? And just like we talk about when distances, something's closer, it's going to get bigger. Farther away, smaller it gets. So we're going to pretend this one is up front so it's bigger. And we call that word perspective. Thank you, second graders, if you knew that word because that is the one word we've been working on a lot over the school year. So I'm just coloring it in. Like I said, if you are not coloring in right now, just skip that spot, okay? You can just go to the next part. Okay, so now I'm going to do my last cross. And I can always go back and add more if I want to or change it around if I want to do that. That's up to you as the artist. Okay, so I have Uno, dos, tres crosses. So now we need to add our colors and our highlights. 
So our first things first is we're going to grab that white, either crayon or oil pastel to make a relief. And to go back over what a relief means is that it's something that if we paint or draw with and then we paint over it, that original first layer pops out and makes that paint say, no, 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 and only this will show up. So we're going to use white right now. Hold on, Rocky got something, so I'm going to go see what that is. Well, I found what he wanted. He wants to go on a cruise. I told him it's not the greatest time. Um, so he tried to bring that to me in his leash. I'm not quite sure what he thinks he's doing. But thank you for being patient. Okay, we're getting back to our relief. So we're going to use our white crayon, and we want to emphasize Jesus' cross. So we're going to make, like, the sun is beaming down. So we're going to make some sunbeams. So rays of light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color in. Of course, since this is white, am I going to be able to see it on the white paper? I hope everyone's answering no. So I'm just coming in, and I'm making lots of of rays to emphasize Jesus' special cross. Okay? And you can do it however you like on that one. Okay, now comes the fun part, which is the coloring, right? So, our first step, I'm going to do the hills first. And I'm going to use green, and I'm going to use blue. You're like, blue, what? I kind of want it to have that tealy color to it, so that's why we're going to use these two colors. So the cool thing we're going to be able to do is make new colors by blending. So blending means what? Adding two colors and making them kind of go together. That's right. So we're going to use green first. And I'm going to go over our hills just like this. Awesome job. Now again, I hope you guys are playing some music or listening to something. Maybe you could be listening to a book on Audible. You could do that. Or... You could have it completely quiet, like we said. I am listening to the raindrops right now. It's a rainy day. I really cannot wait for it to be sunny again. Um, so I'm keep on adding some more color. Now I have to think about the more color I add, the darker it is. And I want my darker color to be at the top because I kind of want it to be lightened as it goes down. See how I'm not filling all the way in? I'm not having to think about that because guess what's going to happen? Hopefully. Our watercolors are going to push it down. And you can hear it. Actually, some thunder going on over here at my house. Then I'm going to lightly add just a couple of these parts. And maybe some coming down from the ground. There's no wrong way. The wrong, well, there is one wrong way, and it's coloring everything in. Which normally I'm like, color it in. This time, not so much. Then we're going to add our blue. And our blue is just going to go right over top of it. Not all the way, just to the top because I remember I want that to be my darker part and I kind of want that one to be more emphasized okay hills are done now we want to do a radiating sunset maybe or sunrise whatever you want to do from here and I'm going to start with the colors from here from the cross because I want this cross to be emphasized because it's Jesus's and I'm going to keep on going out and then go out so first we're going to start with, I'm going to start with an orange, and again, this is how you want to do it. I realized how loud these are on the videos. I'm trying to do them a little quieter. I'm also trying to talk quieter. I'm not used to that. You guys should know that. So it's been a struggle. So here we go. Let's start it. And all I'm doing is I'm letting it come from the cross, just like this. Now I might go back and add orange later somewhere else, but right now that's what I'm going to add orange to, okay? Next, I'm going to add, I'm going to start doing the hill part. And how I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to do pink. These can be in different order how you want to do it. Just think about how you want it to look maybe lighter to dark or dark to lighter. And you also want this to be a realistic colors. So you don't want the sky we learned has lots of different colors in it, but it wouldn't just be random colors all put together. So we want to be thoughtful with what we do. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of red to the top of this. 
And I'm going to also add some red coming out from here. Oh, there's a big thunder. I know, imagine if at Heathwood what we'd be doing, we'd have to be stuck somewhere, wouldn't we? Because it would be two thunder and light, rainy and two thunder and lightning to go out. So, kind of looks like it's on fire. It's not going to look like it's on fire, I promise, once we're done with it. Now, I'm going to do a lot of yellow. Yellow is going to be really helpful in this, so I'm going to just kind of do some yellow around. And again, this is going to look weird because what are we going to be doing to it? We're going to be making it look like a watercolor. If you want to leave more white marks, you can, just the lighter it's going to be. I'm blending so I can put some yellow over that. I kind of like the look of that. So I'm kind of, I'm not going in rainbow order, but I am going to add a little bit of green to the sky. Because if you ever notice, sometimes you have some green in your sky. And it's, and we, like we've learned, it's lots of different colors. And I'm going to go back later and fill this in. I kind of just want to make sure I have all my main colors done first, okay? But again, this could be how you want to do it. Then I'm going to add... See, again, I'm adding kind of, I'm not even doing regular lines. I'm kind of just doing squiggle, but I'm making the parts I want darker more filled in. Doing it quiet. Get me learning lessons. I'm going to get out blue next. It's going to be some nice, look, we have some Heathwood going on over here. And I'm going to do a lot of blue over here. And then I kind of want it to overlap some of that green because I want that tealy color because, you know, that's a good color. To remember, the darker it is, the more it's going to show up. Maybe I want some of the blue coming down around down here. That's okay, too. Now I have to think how I want to fill this part in. So I think I might do, oh, how about I do a little red radiating out because we know if we just mix red and yellow make what color orange so it might have some little orange pops to it that's going to be cool maybe add some more on the top of this mm, let's see you can always add some purple to it too if you want but i'm going with the colors i have right now out i'm going to do some more orange regular orange right here Thank y'all for being patient with me and watching this. Um, let's see. Just a little bit more, and I might just fill that in with yellow. Because yellow is such a great color because it's going to combine up here with the blue and make what color? Green. So it might be a nice little effect to it. And then we know this might just make it a little bit more orangey. Okay. So I'm looking back. I might want to add a little bit more green down here. Just so I don't have to push the color too much. Okay, maybe from the sides. I like to have it more in the sides because you can push it down in the middle. Okay, so here comes the next step. And this is the more fun part. Is we're gonna get our paintbrush and our water, and we're gonna load our brush with water. And all we're doing is going to push these colors all together. And we don't really actually have to worry about them all mixing too much because they're going to look good together everywhere. But one thing I want you to remember is that this is regular paper. This is not watercolor paper. So it will tear if you push down too hard. Okay, so remember, if you push too down, down too hard, it's going to tear your paper and it's going to make you so sad. So what you're going to do is you're going to add water. Now first you might say, oh, this is not doing anything. What you want to do is make sure you add a lot of water. You can even take your brush and do it. We'll start filling it all in, okay? I might actually come up in here and do the sky first. I kind of do one base layer of water to kind of moisten the paper and then I come back and I'm gonna go a little harder so it all goes in. So the hint is, oh and look, a razor radiating out. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. And if you notice, look, it's picking up the color and taking it near the cross. The more, see I was doing crazy like that, it didn't do as well. If I do a smaller strokes, it's gonna pick up that paper. I still keep on getting lots of water. 
Okay, so I'm going to fill this in. You guys go work on this, and we'll come back together and see what everyone's look like. I just want you guys to remember, we want to try to get those lines away. We want it all to kind of go together. So I keep on adding water and mixing until I get how I like it. Keep on adding. See this difference between that difference, okay? So I'm gonna pause it. Let's get back together and see what happens. Great job, watercoloring. We are on to our next step, which if you use Sharpie, it is just to let it dry and write it, your name on the bottom. Now, if you couldn't use a Sharpie and you only had this Crayola marker, now it's time to let it completely, 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 completely dry. And you're gonna outline your crosses and your hills. And also sign your artist's name at the bottom. That should be it. You guys rocked it. I cannot wait to see these next. So look for our challenge this week. I don't want to spoil it, but it might be something very forceful and really great like that. Um, at the end, very end of this video, just wait to see what Rocky did, why I thought I, he was being really good in the other room after he told me he wanted to go on a cruise. This is what he was doing. Have a great week, guys. Miss ya. Can't wait to see you again. Rocky, what are you doing? Oh, hey. <laughs>